alert to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, friend of the show, my son, back again. What's happening, brother? Let's get into Jeez. the business. How you feeling? Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. How you doing, Laura? What's going on, Rosenberg? Hi. What up, man? Yo, ladies and gentlemen, my son has a movement. Uh, this is not a new convo. It is a convo uh, that's been happening for some time. Uh, my son has been at the forefront of it, and it is uh, changing culture. And, you know, we get out, we activate around a lot of things as black folks, and rightfully so. But one thing that, that we need to continue to activate against and, and change culture is the killing of each other and black murder in general. Uh, my son, talk to us about the movement around boycotting black murder. Well, it was, um, first of all, thanks for having me, guys. But um, this movement was something that I, I came up with, or I really coined the phrase of boycott black murder pretty much after um, Nipsey Hussle passed away. You know, I, I did a, a rally in a march, actually two of them, one in New York and one in New Jersey called King Stop Killing Kings. And then um, it got a lot of traction. And then I, I just thought, I was just, you know, there was this big um, debate back and forth about, you know, we always march and we rally when police kill us, but what about when we killing us? When, you know, and I hate the term black on black crime because I know it's proximity crime and murders. So I said, well, wh why don't we have a movement that encompasses all of that, right? Because I don't want to see police killing us, but I don't want to see us killing us either. So it was just boycotting black murder all together, you know, us stand, using our voices, using our platforms. You know, it was the whole initiative for me was pretty much marketing life. You know, I think I have a video on my page where they say black murder is a marketing tool. And I want to make black living and black loving and black enjoying each other in unity a marketing tool. And I, I don't think that is marketed and is advertised and is promoted as it should be. I think there's so many brothers doing this work and sisters doing this work where the peacekeepers and the, the um, central, I mean, the crisis management system with uh, in, in different cities and different states, and they're not promoted. A lot of people don't even know they exist, you know? And I think if we're given the same platforms and the same voices and the same notoriety that the individuals who are promoting killing each other you know, we're given those same opportunities and, and we're able to partner with certain artists and partner with the radio stations and partner with, you know, a, a lot of these um, online blog sites and talk about how it is, how we're trying to unify, how we're trying to stay alive. Then I think that makes it incentivized because I think violence and negativity is incentivized in our culture right now. And nobody's incentivized in loving each other and being brothers and in and, and conflict resolution. They're not making that look cool to these kids. So why would they want to be it? So that's what it is for me. Making boycott black murder, making unity, making peace, making pro um, conflict resolution, something that's cool. So kids actually want to do it. Um, our, our American society has been, uh, you know, riddled with murder and mayhem and chaos and guns and rape and stealing since its inception. It's a part of the fabric of the United States of America. And it's always, uh, whether it's the indigenous people or the enslaved Africans, we have been at the brunt of it or it's been dumped in our communities also. Um, and so even going all the way back to the song Self-Destruction, uh, and, and, you know, that being a part of the hip hop conversation at that time, what year was that Rosenberg? 88? Yeah. 88. Hey, hold on. I think 88 was the whole stop the violence movement for KRS. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so this isn't a new conversation, even the, you know, marches in our neighborhoods, whether it be the Al Sharpton's, whether it be the Jesse Jackson's, whether it, even now where you have Erica Ford and my son and individuals, uh, that are present day outside. Shout to uh, Tamika Mallory uh, and in individuals all across the country who are outside uh, engaging with the youth, engaging in communities and trying to stop the flow of guns and drugs into our communities, uh, dealing with uh, mental health and joblessness. Like there's so many items on the list, my son. And, and the reason I run through this is because I think what you said is very poignant and important which is the cool factor and the reward system. 
right? You have a lot of young people who are putting out records on YouTube or the streaming services, and those records shoot up because suburban America is intrigued and always has been about black young women and men talking about toxicity, murder, drama, messiness. And the, the algorithm financially rewards it. Exactly. And I think that's one of the issues. And I think, and it's not because people just want violence. I think it's intriguing. But people also, when you look at certain artists like Kendrick and you look at Cole and you look at Russell, these young people who are captivating individuals and people pay attention to them. I think if you if we promote that the same way that we promote the negativity, I think it actually will get traction. It, it will become the algorithm, right? So my goal is let's let's redefine the algorithm. Let's try let's make our let's make it our job to say, you know what, we're going to be on the forefront of making it cool to not be beefing with each other, making it cool, showing I want to, I'm getting a boycott black murder chain about this big. I'm gonna have a bracelet that says boycott black murder because when obviously these kids are enticed by these things, right? So I'm cool. I dress fresh. I wear all of the latest gears. I'm I'm out in the clubs and I'm but I don't want to see my kids die. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I don't want to I'm not beefing with a brother and I want to take his life. So I want that to be cool. When I was young, even though there was violence, but there were certain codes and ethics, there was levels of manhood to where we weren't shooting kids nobody wanted violence the women were and kids were off now those things are not even here right there so we need to you know i say we need to put the neighbor back in neighborhood because when we took the neighbor out the hood went crazy so we got to put the neighbor back in neighborhood we got to start treating each other's like neighbors and i say when you identify that this is your brother then you don't want to kill him you don't want to you might get into beef with him you might want to fight you might get angry but you do not want to kill your brother that's just something that people don't want to do. So I don't care how angry my brother gets me. I don't want to take his life. So I'm saying what the real gangsters is the ones who protect the community, right? So when you're really tough and you're really supposed to have all of this props and all these things, then you can stop violence in your hood. The old lady should be feel safe when you're outside. The kids should be able to go to school safely when you're outside. So that's what it is. It's retraining the culture. It's retraining the mind, taking the same concepts, right? The gangs were originally made because they were supposed to protect the community. If you look, if you, I read, I read the lessons when I was locked up in prison and those lessons were about protecting the community, making sure that they're safe, making sure nobody comes in, building with the community, loving on the community. So if you take these same gangs and the same concept and you give them what they actually were formed for, right? And they start moving in the actual um, way that they were actually naturally made for, then we actually could protect our communities and we make that cool, but it's not cool right now. So nobody wants to be the peacemaker because it makes you look soft. So we have a job to make being a peacemaker, making, you know, being the one who's stopping violence look cool again. Well, my, I guess my question for you, my son is two things. One. So I've been getting, of course, a lot recently over the last few months and particularly last few weeks, you know, why do you play the music that you play? Um, and it, it said generically, right? Like people don't even know specifically necessarily what music we decide to play. But my question is, where do you draw that line? Like, where do I as a DJ decide what the artist should be talking about? And and where do I say, okay, you know what? Like, it's easy with drill. Like, you know, we, we don't play drill on our morning show. We're not playing things that we know are directly causing violence in the community. But where do you draw the line with old school songs, shook ones, Annie up, a lot of music that was incredibly violent, but is older music. Where do you think you draw these lines and how we try to take these steps forward? I think the reality of life is that the balance of life is negative and positive. Right. So if you give too much of anything, that's an overload. Right. But I think we had a balance before, like we had KRS-One, we had Public Enemy, you know, then we had G-Rap, you know, then we had so there was a balance there was i think there's an overload of just negativity right there's nowhere really in mainstream that people go for positivity and i think it's not it's not balanced you might have one or two artists who are positive but the, it's overloaded with the drill type in the, in the negativity so I, I i'm not saying that we want to censor rappers because I, we need rappers to be authentic we need them to talk about real things but like you said we can't we can't promote music when you directly talk about somebody you just shot or you killed or somebody who lost their life and you talk about 
um, smoking on the ops and, and pissing on the grave. Like we, that can't be something that we do. So I think the balance is you, you know, what's causing things, you know, certain things, the sounds, I think, you know, old school music, even though it was violent in nature, it wasn't direct. It was, it was, it was definitely entertainment, right? Most of the rappers weren't dying because they made these songs. It wasn't right. people, were, people were killing each other every day. Like every other day we got rappers dying because the culture is so engulfed in violence because that's what the, they think the culture is. They think when you see your favorite rapper or you see a rapper that says he's tough, we got to show him he's not tough. We It's hit a killer, be a killer in hip hop now. That used to be in the streets when you was really on the corners and you was fighting over blocks and this person was shooting. That was, you know, that was away from the, the it was inside of our communities and it was always violence. I tell people all the time, there was always violence. But I think it's incentivized more. And I think the people committing violence are getting younger. We got 12 and 13 year old kids talking about they got ops and they they, they on the internet talking about, I, I, and they literally shot somebody the other day and they on the internet and they got guns and they and they because really they got make money about. off that. That's yeah, that's, but, that's the thing. The, they're gonna make money. It, it's and by the way, most of these records, I, I can speak for this show and this radio station, most of these records don't even make it to the airway. It's it, they make money on YouTube, they make money on IG, the stuff gets shared and they make money. And then a record label or a publishing company is going to come and give them a, a, a deal of some sort uh, with an advance because they're going to take that song and move it around on the streaming services or whatever, what have you, because they want to make money off it, too. That's what's taking place. And there's no barrier to entry. I can make that song on my laptop and throw it up on the internet. There's no barrier. So if I'm a kid and I live, you know, if I'm 12, 13 years old and I want to rap, I could put out a song tomorrow. Like there, I went in, in the nineties, there was a barrier. You had to get studio time. You had to be able to right. pay for that studio time. Likely already have a label and an A and R who's looking out for you. A &R, you had to, I, people can make a song today, have it out tonight on youtube and put it on a youtube channel and by the end of the month if it gets enough views i can make five thousand dollars you're right and, and that's the issue and, and we have to figure out how do we combat that and i'm saying you can't we can't like i said all the time we can't stop all the violence we're not going to stop all the violence but we have to incentivize something else to give them another option right because if you're 12 and 13 and all you think that's the only way to be successful right if that's the only way i look and i'm like dad it's only I don't know how to be successful with nobody else. I, I haven't seen no young kid that's positive doing something that's making a bunch of money. That's not promoted in our culture. So we have to shift that, right? We got to go to these communities. Like I grab up young, young gang members that I know is in the streets and I go to their hoods and I'm talking to them and I'm like, yo, I want to pay you to stop violence on the corner. You the toughest, who's the that's toughest? Right. I, I, like, that's how we incentivize it. You part of our gang now. You know what I'm saying? The, the gang is we taking care of the community. Like and, and and when you show them that they they can get the same rewards and they're getting paid for that, That's then they can fact. start making music. Super so fact. we gotta start incentivizing something else. If it's nothing else incentivized, it's like it's like a presidential election. If we only got one candidate, then hey, that's the only person that can win. So we gotta give them something else to do. My son, um, I remember my, when there was a, um, elderly folks in the Bronx were pleading for help because they were getting beat up by teenagers. Do you remember that? And you yes. organized and you brought attention to it. So what, what kind of conversations did you guys have with some of these local teenagers? And what was the reasoning behind some of it? Well, it, it was deep-seated um, community issues, right? There was mm -hmm. uh, the African community. And there was the Hispanic community. And, and and when they first started in the community, there was barriers, right? They didn't speak the same language. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know who they was. And it, over the time, it had festered some level of animosity between the two cultures. So those things had been going on for a while and nobody had addressed it, right? And so when I went there, I sat down with a, one of the African guys that I actually knew. He was an older African guy and he wasn't involved with the situation, but he knew what was happening. And he explained to me, like, you know, the Hispanic guy be calling, be calling them names and they think that they disrespected them and they've been saying this to them for years and then the Spanish guys were saying they come into, our, into the building, they don't want to let us inside the building. I mean, because we don't want to let them in the building, it's issues. So we really called, we called a community meeting. You know, I got some of my friends, people from the community, 
to sat down the older community with the, the the African people in the community, and they had and they came together and they squashed their own situation. You know, and and thus far it's been moving along great. You know, I check in and they keep saying the community is good. And, you know, sometimes situations like that before it got all the way drastic and somebody actually got killed or shot. You know, there are people who can intervene. There are violence interrupters. And I think that's what we need. We need to invest. I've been telling the mayor, I've been telling a lot of different people, we need to invest in community liaisons, people in certain communities who have respect, who've been through it, who, who both, who all the people in the community have a level of respect for. We don't need police to come in situations like that because had the police came in a situation like that, it might have got way more, you know, drastic. So the fact that I was able to convene, I have, I'm from the Bronx. I know a lot of people in certain communities who have a level of respect for me. And I was able to bring both of those parties to the table. You know, we moved on without further incident. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I'm actually proud of that that community came together and, and they, they fixed their own situation and nobody went to jail or nobody got killed or stabbed or any of those things. My son, one of the one of the reoccurring themes um, that I see you cover, which I feel is very poignant and important, is the so-called OGs in different neighborhoods mm -hmm. that aren't making sure that young people know the paths to having a successful and healthy life and oftentimes lead young people down a path of of violence for their own financial gain in that specific neighborhood um having those conversations on your instagram page i look at the comments often and uh it's very interesting to see the amount of uh grown men that don't want to take responsibility for the message that they're sending to the youth um what would you like to say on that you know i, I call it coward culture you know i think we, we we're in a coward culture where a lot of the cowards are being <laughs> uplifted you know, just like you said online, you can be whoever you want. And a lot of these so-called OGs have platforms. And, and, and I know they're not OGs because I've been in the streets my whole life, you know, and I know that a real OG is not glorifying a lifestyle, not even a lifestyle. We call it a death style that's going to actually lead these kids to death. Right. So we're not glorifying that. Most of us went through certain situations out of desperation, ignorance or whatever. And when we when we realized that it was no it was no other outs to this except for jail or death we we immediately transitioned out of that lifestyle and we tried to make sure that every one of the kids that followed behind us didn't follow that track so we understand that so when i see brothers like that you know first i try to give you a level of enlightenment but i think after 30 plus years old if you're making a conscious decision to mislead a kid then that's a conscious decision you're not a kid no more that's why I have a lot more grace for these younger artists and these young individuals, because I've been there. I understand when you know when you don't have certain knowledge, when you when when you're ignorant to certain things and you don't know. So you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna need room to grow and you need some level of guidance and you need understanding, you need grace. But when these 30 plus year old individuals in the community and not giving the kids the game, but they running game on the kids, then these these they 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 the ops. Those to me is the ops, and I don't have no problem confronting those individuals directly because you can't you can't poison these babies on my watch. You can't lie to these kids. You can't sell them that you cool when you're doing the most negative stuff. You you can't make because I remember it was people in my community that made us feel that if we didn't go to jail, we wasn't real. We we it was some badge of honor to lose your freedom. And when we, I got in prison, everybody was trying to go home. I was like, these streets done lied to me. You know, and that's the message that I, I try to teach to these kids, man. The streets lied to us. They taught us something. And, and, and I don't hold a lot of them because they was lied to. But once you realize that you lied to and you don't do nothing, then it's willful ignorance. And that means that's just a lifestyle you adopted and you're just trying to poison somebody else. So on my watch, I do not allow fake OGs to tell these kids. I, I tell them that they fake, you know, and I'm willing to stand on whatever I say because I understand that. The messages that we give these kids are going to shape this future, right? And we and we we can't we can't make mistakes and then pass those same mistakes on to the generations. That's then what have we done? Then we've completely failed, you know. So 
I'm just trying to do my part. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes like everybody else. I don't say the right things all the time. I don't do the right things all the time, but it's always authentic and it's always out of love. And it's always trying to benefit and figure out a way that I make the culture and make sure that these kids have a better opportunity than I did. The conversation and the movement boycott black murder. His name is my son. Just last night, you had a uh, whole screening for the new music video and a conversation uh, and now the, the song in the video uh, is available on the Hot 97 app for people to go watch. Uh, and let's play the song right now. Why don't you intro the song, my son? Let's get into it. This is my new single, Boycott Black Murder. Hopefully it can resonate. I want you to pay attention. I want you to feel this music because if we don't boycott black murder and they keep killing us and we killing us, then we just die. My son, we love you, brother. Keep pushing that work. Keep doing the positive work. And, you know, you always got an open door policy here. So just hit us whenever. I love you all too, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate all of y'all, man. Keep doing the work. Keep pushing positivity. Keep giving positive individuals and positive music and positive messages a platform because there's not many people that want to do that. So I appreciate you guys.